Hello, everyone. My name is Maggie Dakeva, and I'm a product manager on the Windows Auto Cloud team. Hi, everyone. I'm Cristina Osorio, senior product manager working for Intune customer experience team. Today, we're going to talk about uh, best practices uh, for making sure your Windows Auto Pilot and Windows Auto Pilot device preparation deployments are a success. What we'll go over today is uh, first starting with a comparison of the two solutions, Windows Auto Pilot and Auto Pilot device preparation. Uh, and then we'll dive deeper into troubleshooting each of them, uh, what are common issues that uh, we see customers experience and how to resolve those. So first, let's start by talking about some differences between the two solutions and some guidance uh, around which solution to choose in your situation. Hopefully, by now, everyone has heard about Windows Auto Pilot Device Prep. Uh, this is the new re-architected solution uh, from uh, Windows Auto Pilot. Um, and here we've captured the main differences between the two. Uh, the top differences you need to know about are Autopilot will really provide more flexibility at this time. It supports more scenarios, more capabilities. If you have some additional modes, if you have a hybrid enter join, uh, those are the situations where Autopilot will be a better option for you. On the other hand, with Autopilot device prep, we have invested a lot in ensuring that experiences more consistent, more controlled, and thus more reliable. Um, and we've ensured that we have accurate, detailed, near real-time troubleshooting information right in the Indu portal, where you can effectively uh, troubleshoot and find out how to optimize your experience. Uh, some other key differences here are within the setup process. Without the pilot, you traditionally have to set up the deployment profile as well as the enrollment status page, uh, and optionally target those to dynamic enter ID groups. With device preparation, we have a major difference here where uh, we're introducing a concept called enrollment time grouping, uh, which will allow you to specify your group in advance. And all you need to set up is a single device preparation policy uh, as opposed to the two different policies without the pilot. Another key difference is around the apps delivered. With device preparation, we can support in parallel line of business apps, Win32 apps, Windows uh, Store apps, and up to 10 uh, PowerShell scripts. And finally, another key difference we have here is around troubleshooting, where we've really enriched the troubleshooting for device preparation and made sure you have more information and the data is more real time and helping you troubleshoot more effectively. Based on this, make sure you uh, you pick the right option for your environment. Uh, the key thing is if you have new devices that you're planning to deploy cloud native, consider device preparation solution. And now we'll jump into troubleshooting tips for each of these. Thank you, Maggie. So as we said at the beginning of the presentation, our goal for this session is to share with all of you some of the best practices around Windows Autopilot and Autopilot device preparation. So let's start with uh, Windows Autopilot. Uh, we wanted to bring attention to a few known issues that are well documented, but we still hear customer escalating issues uh, to us. So. Let's get started with autopilot registration issues. Uh, we heard some customers that observed that uh, some of their autopilot devices had been deleted from the list of uh, autopilot devices in Intune. And we often hear that it was the OEM or the partner that unexpectedly deleted the, these objects. Um, we also heard about uh, issues during or after motherboard replacements. Uh, we have a very well documented process, uh, so please follow these steps if you are encountering uh, any issues after a motherboard replacement. Uh, the first step is to deregister the device from autopilot. And if it was registered via Intune, please deregister it via Intune. And if it was your partner or your OEM who registered it, uh, please ask them to, to do so. Then replace the motherboard, capture the hardware hash again, and re-upload it to, uh, to Intune. So your device will be re-registered in the autopilot uh, service for you. So please uh, follow these steps uh, in case of a motherboard uh, replacement. 
The last uh, common issue around uh, registration is if you observe a few of your devices or some of your devices in fixed spending or attention required uh, status. Here, the recommendation is to re-register again the, the device. Uh, we know that previously we had uh, shared some situations where you could uh, wait for an auto remediation, but now the recommendation that we are sharing is to re-register the device. Moving forward, uh, troubleshooting uh, enrollment status page is another common topic that we have to discuss with our customers uh, sometimes. Uh, one of the uh, common error codes is the one that is showed here in the first line. In case you see this error, uh, there are a couple of things that uh, you can check uh, before going any farther. The first one is to um, review your enrollment restrictions uh, rules and make sure that also your uh, MDM enrollment is allowed for, uh, for this device. And the second one, if you are unable to complete self-deployment or pre-provisioning uh, enrollment, go back to your autopilot device list and select the unblock device option and try to re-enroll the device again. Second topic on uh, enrollment status page is uh, the uh, web signing uh, option uh, missing or not appearing after uh, pre-provisioning completes. Uh, the first thing that we recommend you to go check is go see if the device password policies are set to not configure because it can cause uh, here a side effect or an unwanted behavior. So uh, please review that configuration. And we wanted also to take the opportunity to share a link uh, to uh, other known policies that can cause uh, side effects or undesired behavior during autopilot. Uh, they are well documented, but we sometimes find that customers don't, uh, don't go back to this documentation and check it. So uh, please uh, take a look at that. And the third one um, is required applications not showing uh, on the ESP after autopilot reset. This is a known issue and required apps will be installed after the user signs it to the desktop. Uh, so please uh, bear this case in mind. And the final topic for autopilot we'll go through is troubleshooting uh, deployment profile download uh, failures. The first step is making sure your autopilot profile is properly assigned. Uh, you can review the status uh, from the Intune console as well to ensure this has uh, happened before the device attempted to provision. Um, then the second step, if you've ensured everything is assigned properly, is to look into the JSON file, which is downloaded during Ubi. It includes a lot of metadata that will help you identify the reason for the failure. Uh, the next step here is also consulting the event logs and checking to see what uh, error you, you see, which can indicate a uh, different type of issue. So in the next slide, we'll go over um, the different error codes. So the first one here indicates typically a hardware mismatch. Often this happens uh, when the device was not properly deregistered. That's uh, common if there were motherboard swaps uh, and the device registration was not cleaned up. A step you can take here is to re-register the device and attempt to re-enroll it. The second error is when the device was not registered. Uh, you need to validate that the device's hardware hash was properly uploaded in Intune, and you need to validate that you have the deployment profile assignment as well. If you find out that the device was not indeed registered, then make sure you do correct this. You can collect the hardware hash, upload it in Intune, and start from there. The next one, 809, indicates that the signed profile does not exist. Uh, here, one thing you can try is assigning a different autopilot profile and attempting to re-enroll to see if that resolves the issue. And the final error we'll go over is when no profile was assigned to the device uh, and there was no default profile assigned as well. In this case, you need to make sure there is a profile assigned to the intended device. And next, let's move to troubleshooting Windows Autopilot device preparation. So this is a new solution we've introduced recently in the summer of last year, and uh, many aspects of it are still not uh, known to many of our customers. So we wanted to take um, a, a minute here and go over the flow step by step, show you a little bit of the backend and how things are set up. So the first four steps you see here are the prerequisites, things you need to make sure are set up, ready to go in advance before you start your deployment. 
the admin will be setting up their uh, security group, device security group, and including that in the device preparation policy. The device preparation policy also serves uh, as a way to clarify which apps you want to make sure are coming down during the OB onboarding process. Obviously, all of these apps need to be assigned to the security group specified as well uh, to ensure that they do indeed get delivered. The next important step is making sure you start with a device that has not been registered for autopilot. If we do detect the registration, the device will always go through autopilot and not autopilot device preparation. Next, ensure you have a reliable network and uh, you have a device ready with Windows 11 uh, Pro and above, so Pro or Enterprise. What we support, as you know, is entry joint only. So what happens in the onboarding process after the user provides their credentials, we perform that entry join and enroll the device. At this point, we'll install the Intune management extension and perform an MDM sync, which will um, trigger the delivery of policies, deliver a line of business apps and then 365 apps. Now this part is very important. We are serializing how policies, scripts, and apps are delivered. And this is a key difference between autopilot and autopilot device prep. Why we went with this design was because we wanted to make sure things are delivered in a more controlled way and users get a consistent experience and there are no conflicts between the apps. As you might know, with autopilot, you cannot really set line of business and Win32 apps at the same time because that's prone to errors. Here, how we've solved that is by making sure each step applies in a specific order. The order we have here is we'll deliver first the policies, line of business, and 65 apps. Next, we'll deliver the PowerShell scripts, if any have been configured. And then finally, we'll deliver Win32 and WinGet or the, um, and the Microsoft Store apps. This ensures the process is more reliable, less prone to uh, issues. And uh, seeing this hopefully helps you understand how the process works and what happens in each of these stages. All of this is also going to be reflected in the report. And then finally, we have a reboot. So if there is any reboot required, we'll uh, kind of combine those with a call less reboot at the very end. We'll complete the OB process show Windows Hello for business if configured for your tenant, and then let the user go to the desktop, at which point any additional apps, scripts, policies that have not been set in the device preparation policy will get delivered to the user. And the user is ready to start, uh, to start their work. Now let's go over common issues for outbound device preparation. Thank you, Maggie, for the amazing overview of device preparation flow. So yeah, let's go through uh, some of the common issues or, or topics that we uh, see for device preparation. Just uh, for starters, uh, we recommend you to always uh, see the, um, the report for device preparation that is under device monitor. We have added a lot of information around the deployment flow and you will find very useful information as, for example, the phase where your autopilot process was left before a potential failure. Um, so uh, please uh, make sure to um, to check the report before uh, before going any further. We have also a list of known issues that uh, you can go back and refer to uh, if needed uh, to, to get some ideas for, for troubleshooting. The second part uh, we wanted to comment here is around uh, troubleshooting applications and scripts. A lot of things that you will see in this list apply also for Windows Autopilot, but uh, for some reason we need to remind it to, uh, to our customers using device preparation now. Your applications will need to be uh, deployed to the group where the device uh, will be uh, placed and also check that all the detection rules and the rest of uh, the dependencies for your applications are working correctly outside of autopilot as well as all those will apply during autopilot and during device preparation process. Um, so uh, make sure that all this is in place. Make sure that your scripts also work outside of device preparation and make sure that there are no network issues and review the endpoints are accessible uh, from, your, from your device before starting device preparation uh, process. 
We have gathered here as well uh, a list of common issues. So, for example, if the device uh, fails the, the enrollment, make sure that uh, you review your enrollment restrictions. As you may know already, uh, a device that, that comes through device preparation is going to be marked as personal by default unless you upload the corporate identifier to the corporate identifier list. So make sure that uh, your enrollment restriction uh, is, um, is in place and if it is in place, uh, make sure that your device is uh, is uploaded for um, in the corporate identifiers if you want to to do so. Second one is user is getting the enrollment status page in out of box experience, and we cannot see this device in the device preparation report. This is likely, as uh, Maggie said before, if the device is registered for autopilot, uh, autopilot will take precedence. Check also that the operating system is on the list of the operating system supported for uh, device preparation and check all those things before trying to re-enroll through device preparation. Uh, third one is failing to save the device preparation profile. This is most often due uh, to a security group issue. Uh, normally, the Intune provisioning client is not set as an owner. So uh, we have all this very well documented. Just This is just a heads up in case you are having issues creating this profile. Go check the documentation. Uh, fourth one is applications did not apply uh, during out-of-box experience or uh, they are report as skipped. As I said in the previous slide, make sure that these applications are assigned to the security group where your device is going to land after a device preparation. Confirm that the applications are set to be installed in a system context. This is something that people uh, don't, don't follow sometimes and uh, it can lead to, to errors. And also, if manage installer policy is enabled for your tenant, uh, bear in mind that Win32 and Winget apps will be skipped and will be installed uh, while in the desktop. Um, deployment failed due to a timeout. Uh, this, this is something we also had for Windows Autopilot. Review the timeout in the device preparation policy. And you can also go back to the device preparation report and check the deployment time there. If the two things match, uh, probably you are having here an issue uh, with the deployment of device preparation timing out. And to summarize, today we went through common troubleshooting techniques how to ensure you have set up configuration properly and avoid common configuration issues. Uh, we covered both the Windows Autopilot and the Autopilot device preparation solution, as well as uh, some common differences between the two. We went over some guidance on where to use each of the two. And finally, we also reviewed uh, the, the detailed flow of Autopilot device preparation to help you understand how the solution works. Hopefully, now you feel empowered to resolve your autopilot issues, troubleshoot effectively, and make sure your deployments are successful and users have optimal end user experience. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for joining us.